Welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. How can we effectively train the biceps? I've previously hypothesized incline curls may be one of the best biceps exercises. Why? Incline curls place the shoulder into extension, and due to the biceps attachments, this stretches the biceps. I viewed this as a significant point since emerging research suggests that exercises attaining a stretch of a muscle tend to build muscle faster. However, when I made this hypothesis, there had not been a single study comparing incline curls to other biceps biceps exercises. This has now changed. A recent study has put incline curls up against preacher curls for building the biceps. In this video, we're going to be dissecting this study and along the way, we'll also detail other biceps training literature to provide some general recommendations. Let's dive in. The researchers recruited 31 women with some training experience and assigned them to either an incline or preacher curl group. The incline group performed their exercise from 0 degrees to no higher than 110 degrees. The preacher group performed their exercise from around 0 degrees to around 90 degrees of elbow flexion. Some of you may be thinking, wait a second, range of motion wasn't equated between both groups, isn't this a red flag? I believe it would have been ideal for the researchers to equate range of motion, but I don't think this was a major limitation of the study. Why? As we will see a little later on in this video, emerging research potentially suggests larger ranges of motions may not be necessary for optimizing muscle hypertrophy. Nevertheless, both groups trained their exercise for 4 sets of 6 to 18 repetitions to failure 3 times a week. Before and after the study, elbow flexor thickness was measured at 50, 60 and 70% of approximately the upper arm length. The reason I say elbow flexor is because the measurements at these regions would have included both the biceps and brachialis. It was ultimately found growth across the three regions tended to be better for the preacher curl group. So does this study prove incline curls are suboptimal? It unquestionably puts a wrench into my original hypothesis incline curls were one of the better biceps builders, and this study raises the possibility I was wrong. But this new study does have caveats to it. The differences between the preacher and incline groups didn't actually reach statistical significance in any region. Now, statistical significance is often misinterpreted, and a lack of statistical significance doesn't prove there's no real difference between groups. But this still raises a potential alternative explanation for the results. 31 trained women were involved in the study, and maybe it's possible through chance the subjects in the preacher curl group had better average muscle building genetics, thereby explaining why this group saw better average growth. Another consideration is I noted subjects performed their reps to failure, but a clear definition of failure wasn't provided, so it's not truly clear if all subjects literally took their reps to true failure, or if they just stopped their reps when they felt like it. Also, no researchers actually supervised the training sessions. Finally, recall I noted muscle thickness measurements included both the biceps and brachialis. Due to this, we strictly don't know if the greater average growth for the preacher curl group comes from the biceps, brachialis, or both. Both. By no means does this mean this study is worthless and that limited studies should be binned. Science is a process. As time goes by and we accumulate more research as well as higher quality research, we get closer to what the truth might genuinely be. As I've hopefully demonstrated in previous videos, and as I aim to continuously depict in future videos, there are already areas of the hypertrophy and strength training research that are strong enough to where we can draw training recommendations pretty confidently, and some of these areas even provide insight into individual differences. I do have good news. Another research group seems to be working on a study comparing dumbbell preacher to incline curls. Until this study is released, I think it might be most sensible to reserve confident statements on whether preacher curls are superior to incline curls. My main purpose with this video was to update you all and ensure you're mindful of this new data and the possibility I was wrong. Nevertheless, let us describe some other noteworthy studies surrounding biceps training and then we'll provide some general training recommendations. <laughs> This study by Pinto compared partial range of motion preacher curls in the middle position to full range of motion preacher curls and found elbow flexor growth at around the 60% region tended to be greater for the full range of motion group. Two studies by Sato and Pedrosa compared partial range of motion preacher curls in the initial position to the final position. The Sato study found that initial position tended to produce greater growth across 50, 60, 
and 70% elbow flexor regions, while the Pedrosa study found similar thickness gains at a 50% region between both, but greater thickness gains for the initial position at the 70% region. Combining these three studies, it seems the initial part of a preacher curl is particularly important for biceps growth. In fact, if preacher curls are superior to incline curls for biceps hypertrophy, could this be related? What I mean is although preacher curls are performed with the shoulders flexed, which somewhat shortens the biceps, it is most challenging at the initial position in the exercise, where the biceps are at a more stretched length. Conversely, although incline curls are performed with the shoulders extended, which better stretches the biceps, they are most challenging when the biceps are progressively getting shortened. Therefore, if preacher curls truly do build the biceps better, perhaps this means that placing a muscle into a position of stretch isn't all that's important. Rather, ensuring the exercise is challenging at that lengthened position might be a more critical factor. Once again, remember this is a hypothesis. Future research will provide insight into whether preacher curls genuinely build the biceps better than incline curls. Moreover, a study by Nunes might actually oppose this hypothesis. These researchers compared barbell to cable preacher curls. Barbell preacher curls are more challenging when the biceps are at a longer length, while cable preacher curls are more challenging when the biceps are at a shorter length. It was found elbow flexor growth was similar between both. This study connected to why I thought incline curls could still be great for the biceps, since if it did not matter whether the biceps are maximally challenged at a longer or shorter length, the stretch attained with incline curls may be powerful enough. But a caveat with this new near study is elbow flexor growth was just measured at one region, whereas we know this new study and other research looked at growth across multiple elbow flexor regions. Nevertheless, let's transition to general biceps training recommendations. If you're feeling experimental, you could certainly try out preacher curls if you've not tried them already. As time goes by, I'm sure we'll just accumulate further research comparing other biceps movements. But for now, if you want to keep things simple, just select whatever biceps curling exercise you like, be it a standard curl, face away cable curl, or even incline curl. Considering the bigger picture, the biceps are highly involved in elbow flexion and supination. We know the brachialis and brachioradialis are also highly involved in elbow flexion, but this study using fine wire electrodes demonstrates how the biceps display the highest activity when elbow flexion is performed with supination, whereas when elbow flexion is performed with pronation, the brachialis and brachioradialis display higher activity. Other fine wire electrode analyses support these findings. Accordingly, any exercise involving elbow flexion with supination will do well to provide a biceps growth stimulus. Although we know this new present study finds preacher curls evoked more growth across three regions versus incline curls, it's not like the incline group lost bicep size, they still grew. With regards to face away cable curls, one could speculate this is the single best biceps exercise. Not only does this movement place the shoulder into extension like incline curls, thereby effectively stretching the biceps, but it also provides more consistent tension throughout the range of motion, thereby loading the biceps at a more lengthened position as is done with preacher curls. I'm hoping future research explores this. It's imperative to mention you can certainly train the biceps with multiple exercises in an overall program. A study by Costa demonstrates this. One group purely trained their biceps directly with barbell curls across Monday, Wednesday and Friday, while another group performed barbell curls on Monday, preacher curls on Wednesday and incline curls on Friday. Ultimately, growth across three regions of their elbow flexors tended to be better for the group varying their exercises. Now, lat pull down variations were also trained by both groups, but I'm unsure if this really confounded the results. If you're curious about further ideas for creating an effective muscle building program, our high quality partner Alpha Progression can help. It contains an extremely flexible custom workout generator that can tailor a program to your needs. You determine how often and how long you want to train for, and whether you want to focus on certain muscles. You can also specify what equipment is available to you. There are well over a quadrillion input combinations on which custom workouts are generated. A great thing is the training philosophy in the app is based on meta-analyses and literature reviews. There are also aesthetic graphs that can track virtually everything, like your strength progression, number of workouts, body weight, 
and even set numbers per week and the circumference of body regions. The link in the comments and description gives you a free two-week trial of all the app's features. And if you like the app and go beyond, the link gives you 20% off a subscription. Rest assured the app is of the highest standard. We don't just partner with anyone at the house of hypertrophy. Let us enter the land of speculation for a moment. As alluded to earlier, there is research suggesting longer ranges of motions may not be necessary for optimizing hypertrophy. This study involved putting partial leg extensions at the initial position up against full range of motion leg extensions, and found the partials at the initial position produced overall better rectus femoris and vastus lateralis hypertrophy. Another study involved putting partial reps at the stretched position on a calf exercise up against using a full range of motion, and found the partial at the stretched position tended to produce greater medial and lateral gastrocnemius hypertrophy. Yet another study used a multi-hit machine and indicates a partial range of motion at the stretched position produces greater overall growth compared to using a full range of motion. Now, this specific study has only been presented in an abstract at a conference, but it will presumably be published soon. In any case, could this information extend to other exercises such as curls? Recall if preacher curls are superior to incline curls. A potential reason for this is that preacher curls more effectively challenge the biceps at a longer length. Length, but performing partial incline curls at the initial position will effectively and ultimately challenge the biceps at a longer length. The same logic holds for standard curls. Full range of motion standard curls are most challenging when the elbows are flexed to 90 degrees. But performing partial standard curls in the initial position more effectively challenges the biceps at that longer length. If you're feeling experimental, you may wish to try out implementing partials at longer lengths. You could even experiment with integrated partials, with each rep alternating between a full range of motion repetition and a partial long length repetition. A final option is with exercises that are most challenging at the middle to shorten muscle position, like incline and standard curls. You could perform reps to or very close to failure with a full range of motion, and then immediately transition to performing partial reps at that longer length. Here are the summary bullet points. Some of you may be wondering, what about preferentially targeting either the long or short heads of the biceps? As we examined in our ultimate guide to biceps hypertrophy, there currently isn't any strong evidence to suggest we can meaningfully bias the growth of either of the biceps heads. So it's just not clear. Feel free to consider checking out our guide to side delts hypertrophy.